All right, everyone. And we are going to uh, not exactly react to the Ant-Man and Wasp trailer, but we're going to talk about it. So here we are today. The final credits talk about Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania with your host, Mike Spade. We got Big Green, we have Johnny64, and we got Joey Pancakes. What's up, guys? What do we think? What do we think? Tell us. Oh, my God. Mind blown. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Um, Let phase five begin, man. Yeah. I'm telling you right now. Kang okay. uh, is going to bring this all together. I'm, I'm so excited. I'm going to go f as far as saying um, after Spider-Man No Way Home, this is the most exciting movie in the MCU since uh, post Endgame. <coughs> and even with the previous teaser trailers, the 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 final trailer that was released at this time two nights ago uh just hits the nail on the head for my excitement for this movie uh what i love with ant-man movies is like it's like has that last big part before the big movie but i know it's completing the franchise here but man i am pumped after seeing that trailer and we've all probably seen it a few times by now Grim, what are you most excited about? So, a couple points I want to talk about with this. Um, hot take, I've actually considered Kang more of a threat than Thanos. Like, 100%. I, straight up. Even in the comics. But that's my own personal preference. I, everyone loves Thanos for good reasons. Proper villain. But Kang... To be able to control, manipulate time and everything, that is just a big deal. I feel like the stakes are most definitely raised in here. I'm genuinely scared for Ant-Man because we've also noticed a recurring uh, theme going on with later movies because we're noticing the younger generation come in of Avengers. And one way for the older generation to go out sometimes isn't to step away, it's to die in a fight. And we've seen that with Iron Man already. We may see this for Iron Man, and I'm terrified about that. Uh, one last thing, though, before we go, I'm kind of scared about this because I hope to God that we're not going to blame everything on Cassie for this. Because it, from this uh, trailer and the previous trailer, it also seems that everything is like from this point on phase five is going to be Cassie's fault. And I feel like that's just not going to be like good. I feel it's totally inaccurate. What do you mean? Like, 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 because like, like they're going to blame her in the sense that like, Oh, if Cassie never happened and if we didn't jump back down to the quantum realm for whatever fucking reason, then none of this would have happened. Yeah. Ha, ha, ha. Like, I agree with you. Send that signal. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I totally get that. So, I yeah. agree with you mostly, but it's heavily implied that Scott is going to shoulder a lot of the blame for a deal with the devil. And wouldn't have to make the deal if Cassie didn't do it in the first place. Yeah, but how did, how, how did True. Cassie go? Okay. No, how, how did Cassie get involved? Yet. But how did Cassie get involved with Quantum Realm stuff? Watch the first Stop. trailer. Rewatch the first trailer and we'll no, but see. Scott was the one that like really blew up that what you could do with the Quantum Realm. In the mm -hmm. first place she is clearly taking from that and you know and, and even from like the you know the pre-end game like the pre five year you know time jump with like everything that they were doing before that like up until they got snapped at the end of uh ant-man and the wasp right so what do you mean they but they did Johnny, that and you're, thi you're thinking too much you're no but you actually know you're thinking you're forgetting, but you're forgetting one detail though. That well, that may or may not be a thing, but it's it's. I think it's heavily implied right now. Is that um, uh, what's her name? Forgetting Michelle Pfeiffer. Uh, Michelle Pfeiffer. Michelle Pfeiffer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How so, do you? I had a brain fart. 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 Tell us um, everything. No, so I, I, and people are saying this too that you know she probably has has or has had prior knowledge of Kang. While she was in the the quantum realm herself in the second movie, so if she's been keeping him a secret this entire time, but she's been allowing everybody to experiment around the, the quantum realm and do whatever with it, why? If, if he was that much of a threat, why wouldn't she say something in the first place? So maybe she also has some blame to absorb from here as well. You know, I, I don't th I don't think any one any one person has all the blame to bear from this. But it is a good point, though. It, it, it is a good point. But you know what? 
every, everything happens for a reason in this universe, right? So, and it's the multiverse. So we, we, we need we need a catalyst. Like I said, you could even blame sense. you could even blame the freaking rat in. That's, I was just about to say that. That's what I'm scared of because that's what everyone said. Like Thanos would have been stopped if it wasn't for that one rat. I'm like, dude. Come everything on, is just I know things are funny, but come on. One thing affects the next. I, I don't know. The only thing I didn't like about the trailer was here we go. It's it's the Ant Man and the Wasp. Uh huh. I didn't hear her say or do anything. Yeah, where's the wasp? Like, <laughs> yeah, she stick out her hand. Where, yeah, where was the wasp in all this? She, she was, was just get, like, yeah, she was getting yeah, a haircut. Go, go ahead, honey. You do everything, and I'll just sit back here and <laughs> nope. just you know, it's whatever. Ant Man and the Wasp. Yeah, I think she had more presence. Quantumania! Running wild, brother! Oh, yeah, great. Now Hulk Hogan's going to come after us. <laughs> <laughs> I think she, Did she have we more of a presence? Anyway. Did she have more of a presence in the first trailer, though? I think. Yes. Because this, so. this trailer this trailer was all about Kang. Oh, I mean, absolutely. Like, yeah, Bro, like, that, that last straight. shot? That last shot? Oh, my God. Let, let me let, let me just get into like everything that I have to say about Kang right now is just like my, my, all my impressions about the trailer in general because it was all about Kang. It was mm -hmm. all about Kang. This is like like Thanos. Like this is his first appearance, really. You know, in, in, in the uh, Infinity Saga, we had the tease of Thanos like after the first Avengers movie, which is like, oh, like who was that? And we sort of got that in Loki with um, you know with with He Who Remains, who is actually you know okay. um, Kang. But this is like. Okay, we're 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 going into this full force with him now. We're seeing what he's actually capable of, what he might be planning for the rest of like phase five and six, and how powerful he actually is. And at the same time, what what I, what I like about him too is like compared to Thanos, he's not an alien. He's not like uh, you know some crazy otherworldly being or whatever with crazy powers. He's just a man. He is of Earth. He, but he is of another time or, or, you know, another universe or of the multiverse. And he has his own technology on his side. He is like Tony Stark to a scary level. Like who, who, he just went gangbusters with his own findings. Like Tony Stark just barely cracked time travel in uh, an end game. This, this is a guy who took, maybe took that, took the quantum realm, uh, whatever the quantum realm is, is, is capable of doing for the multiverse breaking the multiverse and using that time advantage to jump between, you know, different time periods, different universes to perfect and perfect and perfect everything that he was trying to do. And the fact that there is a, he who remains in existence, who somebody who created the, he created the TVA in essence, he's, he's a human being that created the, the a TV, like a, 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 an entity that can get you to the end of time itself. And that is just, and we're putting Ant-Man, up against them right now so like it's just it's just so crazy to me like that we're going to be seeing all this in an ant-man movie and but everyone you know, everyone loves the underdog absolutely. everyone wants that movie right everyone it's wants one hell of an underdog yeah, yeah. It's one <laughs> i mean that's like it, it this isn't even david versus goliath this is an ant versus goliath do you remember that's the thing though because well, literally this, oh <laughs> literally this particular ant-man scott lang is going up against Thanos. If it was like comics of Ant Man that everyone just like completely like disregards and everything because he's a white hey, beater, hey, but hey, he's man. also like one of the smartest minds in the world. He is comparable to Tony Stark and Reed Richards. That is like okay, this is a fair fight, but we got Scott Lang who is a thief and is learning from Hank Pym everything. That's I'm scared. I'm genuinely scared for him. I'm terrified. But let me yeah. counter that argument by saying that, you know, he's mastered the skills of the suit and being in the quantum realm. Yes, he's no Kang, master of time in the multiverse. Um, but this was the guy that participated in the battle of the time heist and endgame and the final battle against Thanos through time. So, but it is a literally an ant versus time. But he does have advanced knowledge and skills since the first time he attempted to steal the suit in the very first Ant Man movie. That's fair. Yeah. Well, the, the, basically, the stakes are just way higher in this movie than 
you know, and, and I, but we probably shared it in our chat, but there was that article too that, um, I don't know if it was the director or producer of that movie that said that this is going to be like a, like a civil war, like a Captain America civil war um, level type of movie where it's going to be very pivotal. And this is the, again, we are starting phase five with this. It's going to be pivotal for the MCU, just as that movie, uh, civil war was. Well, so, I mean, something is going to happen in this movie that is going to change like not just like the the advent of kang but like something is going to happen in this movie that is going to change how you know our heroes are going to be handling you know life or handling kang or just uh you know just not you know seeing like what the next step is going to be from here because it's it's going to be big it's going to be really huge and i think this is going to be the kang that we're going to see in the avengers movie in phase six well, uh, we're, think, we're, maybe, we're going to see other iterations of him, but I think this is going to be the this one. This is that going to be the main version. Yeah, yeah. They're going to think they defeated Kang when he survived. The whole Meantime, time, there's like seven other ones out. In like yeah, I feel like there's like like going to be a Kang in every movie <laughs> somehow in some way. There's always going to be like, one that like, just like, magically shows up. Like he who remains said, "See you soon." That's it. What? Okay we're gonna see that though like a lot of people will say oh well that's like lazy writing and everything and to no. a degree, maybe you can argue that but at the same time though like you are like cementing your main villain in there even if like he just has like a stan lee-esque cameo in any in all of these movies coming up just to show that like hey i'm still here i'm still watching you and we gonna fight Still, that's terrifying. That's fantastic. That's how you build a villain. Yeah. Like in the upcoming movies, like uh, you, you see Johnny Majors just walking down the street in one shot. You then you get yeah. him. You get hit. You get him occasionally uh, in the after credit scene. Hopefully, not sitting on a chair in a rock like to repeat what Thanos did in one of the earlier MCU movies. But uh, you'll just see an Easter egg here and there. Building up to when, it, when we eventually get to Avengers Five, it's yeah, gonna be a, cr- that's a that's it's a gonna be a crazy point. ride. Him just you know, I, around the corner at that point would be terrifying. Like I, I got my eye on you. I'm like, well, re- you remember, you remember in um, Spider Man Far From Home how Mysterio, like they put uh, Jake Gyllenhaal like randomly in Italy before he revealed himself to be, you know, mm-hmm. mysterious. Even before Quentin Beck was introduced in the movie, he was just there in the crowd watching Peter Parker. And I thought that was genius. And they could totally do that. They could absolutely do that with uh, with Kang. And I'd be so stoked to see that. Mm-hmm. But so for example, basically anything they, is possible. So. so for example, if they flash back to the big battle scene in Endgame, and the camera zooms out. You see uh, King like watching on the hill in the background as Tony Stark sacrifices himself to kill Daniels and his army, or go back all the way to Afghanistan and Iron Man One. That's not going to see- happen, Joe. That's not yeah. going to happen because <laughs> don't, don't happen. get don't get my hopes up. Don't get my hopes. Listen, up. <laughs> that's not going to happen. I'll tell you why. Because it's going to yeah. be too expensive. Yeah. Because every single time you show an actor on screen in a movie, he's got to get, he or she has to get paid. Mm-hmm. So with that being said, that's going to be an expensive movie to do. It's like I happen. said, and because be real. MCU handles things a little differently now and everything as compared to like the comics and everything. Because in other series, yes, we will see exactly that. But like Kang just like watching on like a monitor or something, just like watching events uh, unfold. From here on out though, again, to see him like as a cameo, uh, like just walking down the street, looking up while there's a fight, turning a corner and stuff. It's honestly going to be great for the Easter egg hunters to just like spot him out of a crowd or something because he probably will be in a crowd. Just got to pause the movie at the right time and find him. But John and Major sounding so cynical, so um, cunning. Uh, I mean, they. They picked the right guy for the role. He, he, uh, you, we all thought he was amazing in Loki. It's going to be a whole new level, and, you know, as Kane in in this upcoming Ant Man movie. It's just going to be so mind blowing. You could, so it's going to be. Uh, I'm losing words to say. It's going to be unbelievable. Mm-hmm. All right. So, but wait, what do we all think about Modok? Oh my God! Finally, <laughs> finally, listen, listen to me. I have been waiting for Modok in Iron Man films. 
before this. I, I'm not going to say I'm disappointed that I'm getting him now, but at the same time, Modok is one of those classic Marvel villains that should have been introduced a lot earlier, in my opinion. But we are getting him now, and I'm happy about it. It does kind of kill the fact that, like, he probably isn't going to be the leader of AIM, but at the same time, we're still getting him. He's still going to be, like, a worthy adversary. And But you know who's playing him, right? Yeah, I do. But, again, I... The same guy, the same guy in the first movie that played Yellow Jacket. A different kind of MODOK that we're used to. And obviously he has to grow on me and everyone else like how he normally does. I wish that we would have got the comic version, but again, it's the MCU. I completely understand. Things need to be different. I'm excited. I'm just very curious. That's all. Now with me, I'm not, I was never the biggest like MODOK fan, but like, I don't think he would have made much sense to throw into like, the Infinity Saga. I like. I feel like that. There no, were the movies. No the movies. The way that they were made back then, there was a certain level of like you know down to earth realism that everything was kind of based around. But and where it's just like I don't know, Modok just was always too much of a fantastical looking being to kind of just throw in. Like you know, if we were doing AIM, would you really picture him in like Iron Man three? <laughs> you know, he's just a big head, man. Yeah, like it's just. It, it just wouldn't have worked as well. I, I'm happy to. It, it makes sense to put him in here now because we're we're in the quantum realm, right? And we're seeing the quantum realm in, in full force for the first time, really. And anything is possible there, right? You can have any type of being. And he, well, look, he, look, well, he looks like a character you could have thrown in Gardens of the Galaxy. <laughs> yeah, he could have shown up there too, for all we know. But I'm saying, like, it makes sense to have to introduce him in this quantum realm as the MCU uh, has created it because we've seen. That you know the quantum realm. Anybody that you know is stays within the quantum realm. Maybe they get powers. Maybe the, something happens to them. You know whatever happened to you know we, we saw how uh, at the end of the first Ant Man movie what happened to Yellow Jacket. You know he, he was presumably dead or maybe not because he was kind of crunched into the you know the, the quantum realm slash microverse and he's been there this entire time. Right, so, and that's that's who's Modok. The more right. I can so movie is make, Devil Jacket. So. so that makes sense to me that they did yeah. it that way. If they were to introduce Monarch like anywhere, it was going to be in the quantum realm like in, in that sense. Or in the uh, multiverse, but, but yeah. One more, so how, one does, more. how does everyone think of the visual effects of what um, the city in the quantum realm? I don't know. I don't know if they gave it a name yet, but what do we think of the city? Looks better than Avatar. Quantum yes, yeah. that's where I was alluding to. Yes. I was trying 100%. to get to that, but yes. Oh, yeah. damn, you stab a fucking shitter. Didn't we just finish? Yeah. I thought that episode was done already. Oh, that was, uh, <laughs> that was days ago. Oh, man. Yeah, we're, we're going to be talking about Avatar 2 for a long time, I'm sure. Oh, but <laughs> We're going to be digging at that movie for a very long time. Oh, yes, but we are. Listen, I'm getting it. Until Morbius 2 comes like, out. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, God. Oh, I bet you though I like Morbius more than uh, Avatar, but that, that's that's a story for another day. Ooh. But um, yeah, I, I look Avatar was really really bad, and I you know, our viewers, I, I implore you to watch our last video about what we thought about the movie in general. I had a lot to say, but um, yeah, I, I can totally see myself liking even the first <laughs> Morbius more than this movie. But um, yeah, mm. it, uh, go, going back to uh, Ant Man, the, the main topic at hand, like with the quantum realm. Um, I'm just like, like I said before, like this is the first time we're really seeing the quantum realm and like all of its glory, right? Like we've gotten kind of the first movie, we just barely got a taste of it. You know, the, the second movie, um, you know, we saw more of it like when they were rescuing um, Michelle Pfeiffer out of you know at her 30 year uh, imprisonment there, whatever you want to call it, but. Um, now we're seeing, you know, there's whole cities in there. And, you know, Kang has his whole, like an army down there. He has his technology down there. Um, you know, we see what Modok, you know, maybe we'll learn like why he looks that way, like, you know, because of the quantum realm and whatever other creatures. And Bill Murray. We're going to see Bill Murray. I was, I I was about to say it. Yeah. Right, yeah. Bill, Bill Murray is Bill Murray in the quantum realm. I don't think there's anything else that the quantum realm can do to Bill Murray at this point. <laughs> so let me ask you, know, you this. Anything is possible. Do you think Bill Murray's character plays a big part, or you think he was just thrown in the movie for shits and giggles, like he, like it, like I, how he played himself in Zombieland? No, I think, I think he, it's he, going he, to be just like the Collector was, like just how I, they had um 
I think yeah. even less than that. I think he's going to be like, really? um, yeah, the I think mayor of the quantum realm. Is is he the mayor of the quantum realm though, or do you like a specific city? Well, it, we'll I, I don't think that's confirmed, but I, I, I think he's even every single ma major actor that has cameoed in an MCU movie has played a character. Short of it being right. Stan Lee, they've always been some type of character that does have some kind of lasting effect in the movie. I, good examples of uh, Stallone. I was I just thinking that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And that's the level. That's the level I was going to say he was going to be at. Exactly. He's, he's at so level as an actor, and I think he, usually when they get them, that's the smaller role. Exactly. But he wasn't just there, just be like, hey, yo, I'm supposed to be yeah, yeah. in the Marvel <laughs> movie. Like, no, he actually had a purpose. Yeah. So and he will have a purpose. Yeah. But not like a collector level purpose. Tom Cruise is the Iron Man variant. Oh, wait, that didn't happen. So. No, no, no. no. Wait, that, Hot take may never bad. fucking happen. But that's a bad... I, I hope it does God. happen. I hope Tom Cruise plays Iron Man. I, I you will. are just a spiteful bastard, that's why. No, I think it'll be great. How many times have we seen our, uh, Robert Downey Jr. run? Never. But if Tom Cruise plays Iron Man... Why do I want run. to see Iron Man running? Because why not? Why? <laughs> The amount of green screen effects, he would just be disgusted and be like, no, I need practical effects. I need oh to actually be God. at the hinge of the multiverse Yeah, <laughs> if I'm I, going to shoot this scene. <laughs> I feel like Tom Cruise would actually have an Edward Norton-esque feel to it where like he needs yeah. his finger in everything and everyone's just going to be like, no, like we have this. Oh, no, I need to rewrite the script. I need to speak to the stunt guys. I need to do this. I need to do that. It's like, Tom, go home. Just so that's, what, <laughs> that's probably that's probably why he would never work with uh Marvel Studios slash Disney. You don't know that. Would, you don't know that. You don't know that. You don't know that. I pray to God we never come to that day. Hot take over. Mm. Anyway, hot take over. <laughs> All right, guys. So that was our thoughts on Ant Man and, and the and Wasp Quantum Mania. Ant, Ant Man and Kang at this point. <laughs> well, yeah, it should have been Ant Man versus Kang. Story. But <laughs> these are our thoughts. What are yours? Tell us in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Click the notification bell too, please. Ding. Smash that multiversal like button. I'm sure <laughs> the no, word from our you, sponsors. You know what to do. You, listen, you're 10 years old on, on the internet. You're fine. You'll be okay. You'll be fine. Add, add a credits. Add a credits. credits. I'm James Cameron. I know the credits. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>